Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs for General Disturbance. This is the 105 FH18B2, the French Tier 5 Premium SPG that most people know as a Leffy, a leaf blower, or Jingles calls it Le and we call it Fifi La Pew Pew because it was named by one of our members. This one belongs to Oxidor and he's on the north spawn of Steps. Three marks of excellence on the barrel. That takes a hell of a lot to achieve. And he's got the Polish flag as well on the gun shield. And he has every right to wear that. He even got told by somebody he should take it off. Well, no, don't take it off. Be proud that you're Polish and that your nation is doing a great thing at the moment to help the people of Ukraine. So thank you very much indeed, Poland. Well, let's see how he gets on in this game. It's a 105mm light field howitzer, which was designed in 1918. It's got hydrogen pneumatics um, re recuperation, and it's made by Rhine Metal Borsig, the gun, actually. Okay, first target is a T-78. Lining up, rounds out. Oh, that's a penetration. 436 is a high roll, and the target is dead. Aims for the Stug and gets a nice solid hit for 153. And the Stug's dead, but he didn't get the kill on either of those. Okay, we've got an SU-100 and an ARL-44. It's a tier 6 game with tier 5 tanks. Now that means that... Oh, that one went into the side and that was a heat round. And he did get a pen for 355, which is another high roll. He's back to the HE now. Okay, air Skoda T25 up on top of the hill, fires around in, goes to one side. Lining up the shot again, rounds out. No, it's a long flight time from there to the target. And the ARL's come out of that little dip now. Well, he managed to dodge that shell, but will he dodge the next one? Probably not. Yep, that's a solid hit. 142, and oh dear, the T-3485 has flipped himself on his side. Not good. And that was definitely a penetrating shot for the front, and the ARL-44 is out the game. Now we're looking at that Skoda again. We fire a blind shot in. Well, blind shot, a snapshot, but it didn't get a kill. Goes for the Type T-34. Rounds out. No. That's a hit. That looks like it hit the side of the turret. Can we get another hit? Well, he moved away before the shell arrived. T-67, they've got virtually no armor. Fires the round in. Oh, he got him! That's his first kill. Now, can he do the same to the Type T-34? Fires the round in and, oh, narrowly misses him. He's down to seven hit points and he's out the game. Okay, so we're three up on the enemy at the moment, and over on the other side of the battlefield, we've got an ARL-44 and a KV-1. So he's dialing in on the ARL. Notice how fast Oxidor dials in. That's down to the fact that he plays this RT a lot, and I mean a lot, which means that he's very experienced. And that's why he dials in very quickly and gets accurate hits. Rounds out again. Oh, it hits the KV-1. I think he's going to be fuming with that ARL-44 driver because he stopped him from actually moving out the way. And they've both gone unspotted. We haven't got any guys near enough to actually see where they are. Now, in this battle, there's two RT on either team. Our team's got uh, the Fifi and, of course, the Bishop, who's over on the other side of the battlefield. And on the enemy team, they've got an M41 HMC and an SU-122A. No, these are all blind shots. Chances are the enemy's um, elsewhere now. Well, we've platooned with um, we've platooned with a Stug Fear, who um, unfortunately just got wiped out. So he was taken out of the game. So we're all alone in our platoon. Yes, on the lookout, and that A46 is sitting up there behind the bushes, taking pot shots at our guys. Almost flipped himself there. Rounds out. Oh, another penetrating shot. 410 
It's an average roll, and there is the enemy RT. It's a one SU-122A. He goes down, taken out by our Wizzy 131G. KB-1SA takes a round to the engine deck. Can we get another hit in him? He's guessing where he's gone. Nope, didn't get him that time. He must have changed course. Fires into the gap between the two craters, and no, no joy. Okay, well, looking at the very back of the map, we can still see those bushes. I'm pretty sure that A46 is still up there somewhere. Meanwhile, the KV-1SA was spotted behind that rock. Now, I'm hoping our teammates are going to get an idea where the enemy tanks are. There's the KV-1SA. He's being fired on by our bishop. The KV-1 comes into sight. He goes down. The enemy are falling like flies. We've only got a two tank difference on the enemy now. And oh, that Cromwell looks like he's going after our Hellcat. Shot on him. Dodges that shell. Must have got warning that the shell was coming in. So instead of backing up, he pushed forward. And we've lost our Hellcat. That guy looks dangerous, actually, because he looks like he knows how to avoid shells. Rouse out. Long flight time. Nope. Didn't get that one. But there's the RL-44, and he's holding a corner against our Wizzy-131. Oxidor fires a round in, and yes! Second kill. That was a really good one. I love those shells where you actually fire on an enemy tank that's holding still on a particular corner, and he gets a nice smack into the side of the Cromwell. But it looks like he's coming in our direction, actually. We do have a teammate nearby who might be able to stop him. In fact, it's a Wizzy 131 GFT, I think. But the A46 is very close as well. In fact, he's just turned around, rounds out, narrowly misses him. As you can see, the Tetrak uh, family resemblance. Oh, we got it with a blind hit. Yes, the A46 goes down, but unfortunately, so does our M10 RBFM. It was actually the tank over on that corner, not the Wizzy 131. And that Cromwell is now the only... Well, there's no tanks between us and him, so if he was to come north, he would meet us. Luckily, this RT does have a 390 meter view range, which means the Oxidor would see him before he was fired on. Because that's very near to um, the standard view range of a medium tank. Fires on the M10. No, didn't get it. It looks to me like the M10 is backing up into that little hideout in the center of the map at the back, on the very bottom of the map, where the RT normally goes. There he goes. Can we get a shot in? Rounds out. Oh, so close it splashed him. Can we get another round in? He fires in. Will it get us kill? Well, it did hit something. But it didn't kill the M10, so he must have been very low on hit points. Oh, we just killed the M41 HMC, so it must have been him that we hit with a blind shot. And the M10 actually survives that so there's only one enemy left and that's the Cromwell we're driving closer towards him now where are you got one guy in the cap at the moment to try and force him to come back there's every chance he will try and come towards us though in fact, he is very close to us right now, and we've been spotted. One shot goes into his side for 108. He can't see us because the bank is in the way. Second shot, 165. Next shot will kill him. Keep it on target. Yes, wins the game. Superb win there by Oxidor. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was an ace tanker game for Oxidor in the 105 left H18B2. 
He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He actually ended up getting five, one short of getting a top gun and one third of the enemy team. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got eight, uh, 16 in that one, sorry. Um, and also he got a gauze medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points for his own vehicle. A high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And he got a confederate as well because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And he's winning from that battle, 12,328. And this was played during his live stream on Twitch TV. Yes, I did have him on my computer at that time. I've just signed up for the 10th month in a row on Oxidor's channel. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, I didn't actually, before I went to the channel, I didn't mention his win eight was 12,328. That's super unicum and a lot more. But let's have a look at the team score now. 3,674 hit points of damage went to Oxidor. Easily the highest, but look at that Cromwell player. He did very well. 2,484 in second place. And in third place was the M10 RBFM on the enemy team who managed 1,805. When it came to kills, yes, he got the highest number of those with five. Three kills went to the Cromwell and two kills went to the Hellcat T3485 T1 Heavy. Um, that's the same T3485 who flipped himself on his side, by the way. So he was actually quite a good player. He just got caught out at that particular moment and flipped over. Luckily, there was somebody there to flip him back up again. But the, um, on the enemy team, the M10 RBFM, the Air Roll 44, and their SU100 all got two kills as well. When it came to base XP, well, there's only one player in it, and that is Oxidor. So he's got the top in all three columns, and he managed to get 1,403 base experience points, the only player to get over 1,000. The next highest scorer being the Cromwell, who managed the highest damage on the enemy team. 677 went to him. And 6.45 went to the M10 RBFM in third place. Oxidor 5, 45 rounds of ammunition in that game. He only had five rounds left at the end. They were all HE. 19 direct hits on the enemy, seven penetrations. One of those pens was a heat round fired through the side of the ARL 44. He wouldn't have liked that at all. 21 splashes on the enemy as well. 3,674 hit points of damage, of which 3,306 were at more than 300 meters. I think the close shots were definitely on the Cromwell as he was coming towards him, and he definitely wanted revenge, but he wasn't going to get a chance because Oxidor wasn't going to let him. 12 enemy vehicles were hit during the game. Five of those were killed, which meant there was a seven difference as the Confederate. And he earned 52,718 credits from the game in profit and 2,946 XP. That was a really good game, a clinical explanation or demonstration of how Oxidor has three marks of excellence. You just have to keep playing and playing and playing until you know your machine backwards that you can hit a target every, well, nearly every time, unless the enemy can fool you into what they're going to be doing next. But uh, yes, a marvelous display of uh, the Fifi. And of course, why he has the Polish flag? Well, because he's proud of it. He's proud that he's Polish and he deserves to show that Polish flag whilst he's doing so well in the game. So good on you, Oxidor. Well done. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.